You want to bring your lead playing to the next level? This video, we're going to go over the six most common lead guitar mistakes. Hey, hey, how you doing? Good people. David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all's going well. Hope your guitar journey is going famously. You know, I get a lot of emails from students all over the world, and one of the most common questions is, I get is, hey, how can I get my lead guitar playing to the next level? It just isn't sounding right. Or my lead playing just isn't sounding musical. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I can't get it to sound right. I get emails like that all the time. I also get a lot of audio files emailed to me from players and students all over the world and they say, hey, can you just listen to this and tell me what you think? I'm trying to you know, work with my lead playing and it's not sounding right. So I hear a lot of the challenges and struggles that are going on as well as I pull from my experiences teaching for 25 years uh, both, both privately with students and online, right? So I have a good sample and believe it or not, I hear a lot of the same things over and over again where I think students can uh, improve, where I think there's lots of area for incredible growth potential, right? And a lot of it, the, the students are making a lot of the same mistakes. So I, I thought I'd come up with a game plan. In this video, I'm going to go over the sixth most common from what I hear, I pulled six of the top ones. Um, most common guitar soloing mistakes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a video to help you attack those areas. You So listen to this list. Maybe all six of them aren't appropriate, but you might think you might need improvement or one or two. I'll make a video for each one, right? And then I'll put the links to each of those videos down below in the YouTube description box so you can go to the one that you think would help you best. Right. So what we have to do is kind of like a three prong approach because it really, you know, man, it's easy for people to sit back and say, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. Or you see videos all over. This is why your guitar playing sucks. Right. But they don't come up with solutions and concrete application. They just, it's easy. Anybody could sit there and, and criticize and pick things apart. Anybody could say, oh, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. But I think the, the, the better way is a three prong approach. Identify the issue. Right. Then come up with some practice means, some devices, techniques, some things to rectify it, things to work on, to tackle it, and then three, application and practice, right? So that's what we're going to do with this three-prong approach. And I'm going to give away some jam tracks too, six jam tracks. So stay tuned for information on that too because... Um, in all those lessons down below, we're going to use jam tracks for application, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you those tracks so you could practice, right? That's a real important part is the application and practicing over jam tracks is so important. And hey, before we get started, if you could do one thing for me, if you can click that subscribe button, that really helps us here at Next Level Guitar at Rock on Good People here. You know, that enables us to keep this content coming, all right? It enables us to let you know when we have new videos coming out and this is really important for this series especially because it's all going to be connected so you're going to want to subscribe to that channel again it really helps us and we really appreciate it i just want to relate this to you you know man i i've taught hundreds of thousands of students all over the world online and privately and let me tell you this man you're not alone you know what I mean? Like, we've all gone through this. We've all struggled on our lead guitar journey. We've all hit walls. We've all ran into these challenges. So what you're experiencing, if you're getting frustrated and if you feel like you're not getting anywhere, you know, we've all been there. And so that's why we're here at Next Level Guitar to help you in your guitar journey and help you over these walls and to say, hey, man, you're not alone through this. We all go through it as we're refining our art, right? We all go through it as we're honing our skills. So you're not alone. Stay positive. Get in that mindset that you can do it and tackle these things one at a time. You check them off, man, and you'll be good to go. So let's look at the six top things that I see soloing mistakes, areas that need improvement. Number one, too many notes. A lot of times when I get these audio files or students play, they're playing note after note after note after note after note. And, and it's just way, way too much. It's too much musical conversation that's not musical okay just remember the adage you know no one likes the guy or gal that talks too much same thing with the guitar the first thing is way too many notes so you got to cut down on the amount of notes you're playing which leads into the second number two number two is not enough space okay there's not enough you're playing just note after note after note after note and you're not letting the notes breathe you're not letting that musical 
ness goodness happen because you're playing too many notes and the listener is trying to grab onto all these different notes and all this stuff and it's just too much so the thing is leave lots of space especially at first even if you're playing fast like even if in the intro or the outro like i'll, I'll be jamming over one of the tracks and i might throw in like some fast licks but if you notice i'll stop leave some space play fast leave some space right that's really important whether you're just starting out or if you're well into your guitar journey. You want to leave space, let the music breathe. The third thing I hear a lot um, as what I think could be improved on is there's not enough musicality, musical touches in the solos that you're trying to play. And what I mean by that is you're not taking the notes and doing things with them that are musically interesting. You're just playing note, 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 note right? You have to kind of stop let the notes breathe like i said then apply some vibrato uh, string bending being expressive string bending is like one of the most expressive things you can do but i don't hear a lot of that in these early on solos we, you want to add slides hammer-ons pull-offs anything to get the sound varying a bit so it's not just that one after another single note add double stops or two notes played at the same time for texture you need lots of that in the solo to make it interesting, to make it sound right, to make it sound musical. So I don't hear enough of these expressive touches, even if you just change the notes and just start sliding around. And if you want to if you want to have instant help with that, I'll give you something right now. Click on the link below and I'll send you a free video lesson that talks a lot about that. It's not on YouTube where I talk about taking the notes and doing things with them that are musically interesting taking the notes and starting to really make them sound musical and all the different things you can do to dress up your soloing. Click on that link, I'll send you that, and I'll send you an ebook that has a lot of scales diagrammed out and soloing strategies, all for free. So be sure to click on that link and take advantage of that. So we, you need more stuff that's creating different sounds. And a lot of that is techniques and devices, and that takes a while to develop. And we're gonna go over that in this series. Fourth thing, I hear often is I don't hear enough rhythm vocabulary in your soloing. And when I mean rhythm, I'm not talking about playing the chords behind the jam. I'm talking about where you're just playing so many notes and you're not playing rhythmic phrases to lock into what's going on around you. You're not playing a rhythmic kind of motif and then kind of repeating it and catching like a melody or something. You gotta have a good rhythmic phrasing as part of your soloing repertoire as well as the single notes. You know, a lot of guitar players thinks it's, think it's all about note choice. And you see so many lessons about that. And students, how do you solo over this? What scale do I use over this? What scale? What's, and scales are important, don't get me wrong. They're the building blocks, the licks and stuff. But you really need to have a really good rhythmic vocabulary to soloing, especially like if you're playing blues. Because if you're playing blues and you're playing pentatonic scales, there's only five notes you're playing, right? Those scales have five note scales. If you're playing blues scales, that's six notes. So you better have a pretty damn good rhythmic vocabulary because your, your notes are limited to those six notes that you're probably playing, right? So having this good rhythmic vocabulary and locking in to what's going on around you and connecting and not just kind of soloing off in your own world, that's really, really important because again, it's drawing the listener in and it's making it sound musical. The fifth thing I often hear that I think needs improvement um, in, in soloing uh, when you're starting out is things like, I don't hear enough melody. There's not enough melodicism, if that's a word, melodicism. Um, so, and this is so important because what really is catchy? What really draws people into your solos? Melody, it's all about melody, right? Think of the choruses of the songs, right? They're catchy because they're repeated. Get to the chorus and then they repeat the chorus. And, and that's what kind of stays with people, right? So you want to throw in some melodic touches in your soloing and then vary them. And then you have a few melodic touches and then repeat them throughout the solo. Listen to any solo by like David Gilmour. You know, he's a master at that, at adding these melodic touches. And he's a master at adding these nuances, like what I was mentioning before in number three, I think it was number three, or, or uh, about not enough, mu enough um, musicality, adding enough things, taking notes, doing things with them that are musically interesting, right? He does all so much of that through nuance, through bending, through subtle use of the vibrato of the tremolo arm, right? So... You know, you want to really start thinking about melody and melodicism in your solos. And um, you, it, it just helps the listener latch on, helps people remember. And your solos can almost, you can almost sing them. And that's what's going to make them truly memorable. And the sixth thing, sixth and final, most common 
kind of guitar area with beginner soloing, I see a lot of, I hear a lot of mistakes is bending out of pitch. And that's, that's a bad one because when you're bending out of pitch, man, it really can sound very grating. And, um, String bending is an art, and like I was saying earlier, it's it's one of the most expressive things you can do on guitar, and it takes a long time to master. It really does. But when you're bending strings, you know, you, you really need to have a target note in mind that you're bending up to. Usually you're bending up to the next note in the scale or the one after that, right? So you just can't be randomly bending notes out of pitch, meaning you're bending the bend too short of the note. You're trying to hit like this note here, and you're bending it short so it sounds flat or maybe you're over bending it and it sounds sharp which is really bad when you bend out of tune sharp um, when you should be like right in here in this area right so string bending is an art it takes a long time to develop but you really have to listen and you really have to know okay in this scale i know i could bend this note to this note and i know i could bend this note to this boat i talk about that in that ebook that you can get. There's a whole page on which strings to try to bend in certain scales. And you really have to get your ear dialed into that. It sounds so much, you know, more musical when you're not having issues bending in pitch. So bending out of pitch is something I really want you to um, think about. I really want you to listen for, develop your ear. I keep telling students so often it's so important to develop your ear. And again, I'll have more lessons to attack each of these things, and I'll put those in the, in the description box below as I complete them. So there's, in my opinion, six of the most common soloing mistakes. We've identified the problem. Think about it. Think about which ones you, you feel. Be honest with yourselves, right? Think about which ones you feel need improvement, and then we're going to start attacking them and I'll put those lessons in the YouTube description box below. We're going to use jam tracks for application. And in each of those lessons, I'll tell you how to get the jam tracks because I'm going to give them away for free. To get started, I want you to click on that link below and I want you to grab that free video lesson and the free ebook, right? So you can kind of get a head start until I have these lessons rolling in the pipeline on what, how you could start sounding more musical. I want you to stay positive. And I also want you to remember, like I said earlier, that you are not alone, that we all go through this as we're refining our art. It's part of the process. Remember, your guitar playing is an evolution, right? Check out some of the other links that I'll put in the YouTube description box. And, and please remember to subscribe to the channel. That really helps us. It helps us to keep bringing the lessons. It helps us keep bringing the content. Click the like button. If you like the video, please leave us a comment. Let us know what you feel are some of your soloing challenges. You know, maybe I could do a lesson on that. We'll get some dialogue back and forth, right? Um, so there's lots of good links down there. Um, I want you to have fun with those guitars, right? Give yourself plenty of fun time on that guitar. I'm excited about this series because I think it's really going to help you in your guitar journey. The questions, I'll put my email address in there also. Uh, it's all there, all right? I'm David Taub, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. Keep rocking, stay positive, swing for the fences, and I will see you in the next lesson. Yeah.